if you've been wanting some new merchandise from the Puddles Fabrication Shop, today is your lucky day. One lucky merchandise purchaser is gonna win this bad boy. It's just a wall hanger. In fact, if we make this in this video, you'll see that in a bit. edition wagon shirt. Now I know you're thinking the wagon ain't here. It's gonna be here soon. We're about to get her back from the interior shop. We're about to then drive it down to Austin, Texas for the Lone Star Roundup, April 19th and 20th. Come see us out there. This right here is a shirt that once it's gone, it's gone. It'll never, ever be printed again. Woo, got that flying steely up front. Got the good side profile on the back. She's a looker, folks. She's a looker. <laughs> What's better than one wagon shirt? Two wagon shirts. You dang right. We got a side profile view. Well, you know we got the classic angle view right there, baby. Something about that cream color with that gray. I just like it. That is a good looking shirt, folks. Not limited edition, but limited quantities. Woo, baby. That may be my new favorite. If we've got it in a shirt, we probably got it in a sticker. So right there, we've got our wagon stickers available now. And I may just put it out there that I may have the best looking patina 61 wagon alive on this planet. But I'm thinking about it, we do have a few hoodies left in our gas station design as well. Hats, get your hats. Summer's right around the corner. You gonna mow that lawn without that on your head? I don't think so. I once heard if you wear this and you mow your yard, your lawnmower goes like four times faster. That is not true. Now, besides the bony hats, we got some Richardson 112s we're gonna release. Charcoal with the black with the rawhide or the gray. We got the tricolor black, charcoal, heather, teal. And then down here for you military supporters, there you go, baby. Got that kind of greenish color with the light brown. Whoo, I'm gonna have to take that one hunting. Junkyard car hunting, we need some more projects. Whoa, whoa. Uh, that one's a flex fit, come to find out. How did not know? You learn something new every day. All right, our only available flex fit. You like the stretchy hat? Here's your option. If you don't like this one, I don't, I don't even know we had them. We have not released trucker hats in a long time, so you've got six options. I almost said four. I can't count. Couple grays to choose from, couple blacks, and then very limited amount on our two colored ones here. Y'all know I'm a trucker hat wearer. The mills will come flat. They'll stay flat if you want them flat, or if you want to put a little curve in it like mine, they'll hold a curve. It's a good fitting hat. I like it. Boy, you get you one of them nice new hats and that new shirt, you'd be ready to take mama out for a steak dinner. You'd be looking sharp. You'd be looking sharper than the Model A floors we're about to build in this video. Speaking of that, guys, we appreciate all the support. Thank you so much. Head over to puddingsfabshop.com. Guys, the stuff sells quick. So if you don't get on it, it may not be on there next time you get there. I cannot thank you guys enough for that support. And I really hope you enjoy this video. Man, oh man, guys. Uh, well, I wish I could lie to you and tell you I'm super excited about this video. I wish I could tell you it's one of the best videos I've made in a while. I wish I could say you're gonna see a whole process of building some sweet Model A floors. I wish none of this is going on right now, actually. This last week, uh, me and my family, we actually went out of town. And before we did that, I got out here and I busted butt and I built Model A floors. We drove up to see our friends in Michigan who we have not seen in a while and they just had their new baby. So congratulations to them. As I got there that morning, I'd already had like over half the video edited. I was having to edit myself because Chris was out of town. No big deal. I still got it. When we got to Michigan that next morning, I got up really early so I could edit before everyone else wakes up. And well, I found that I had a custom two-piece memory card now. This goes in here. You just push it forward. It's not a push-to-click style. Of course, there was another cover on that. And then about that much hangs out of there. Now you see, in all my years of being put in Fab Shop here on the YouTube, anytime we've gone anywhere, I've always taken the memory card I need and I put it in my holder like that so it won't fall out. I've then got a handy dandy backpack like Dora the Explorer uh, that I've had since I was in the military. It's got about 14,000 compartments. I put one of them in a little thing in about the middle of it in a little 14,000 compartment thingy. When I pack the car, I always lay my bag on top of like the big suitcase or something because it also has my laptop in it and I want it protected. I don't know what the devil them girls done did in that car uh, that 
something and somehow hit my backpack and hit it in such a precise way that it hit just that tiny little tip hanging out there and it sheared my memory card, but it did it. So yeah, the first day we were gone, I got to wake up and that morning realized I do not have a video for the upcoming Monday, which I'm supposed to be editing on this trip. Now, as far as recovering that information, I tried, guys. Uh, I did everything that I could do. You can see the metal in there. It's sheared. You'd have to go to one of them expert recovery places where they prefer, per perform microscopic surgery on memory cards. And then you better have uh, memory card insurance because they charge you like it's a real damn surgery. To like send that out, it could it'd be like four grand to have those experts get that crap off there. Well, the video ain't even gonna make that, so then you're just losing money. It don't it, it don't make sense. It don't make sense how it happened. It don't make sense to send. Oh, besides that, it'd be like two months probably before we got the crap back, which wouldn't do us no good anyways. So basically, what I've got to do is get out here today, show you what we did. But I, I'll recreate a panel, guys. I ain't scared. Let's uh, roll into our weekend here. We're, yesterday, we were in Nashville. We drove actually from Michigan down to Nashville. We went and toured the Country Music Hall of Fame. Got to see Studio B where Elvis shook his hips, probably singing. Uh, pretty cool little tour. Happy to see that. Kentucky, your state is beautiful. I really enjoyed driving through there. And uh, we got home. And we went to leave Kentucky, three, or Tennessee, 3 o'clock. Got to hit traffic immediately putting us a nice hour behind. We roll in this morning at 1.30, and now here I am, ready to go. This weekend, now that I get to work, uh, record today, edit the rest of it, to hopefully have something ready Monday. Saturday uh, was, we have daughter's birthday party, supposed to be getting stuff ready for and helping with. Then, of course, we got a church event on Sunday that's supposed to take up a good part of the day. And then Monday, my wife's having surgery. Uh, what I'm getting at was this was not a good weekend to have to work, but that's what we're going to do. We're going to get her dead. No excuses. Sorry, y'all just had to listen to that. I just ain't really said all that out loud since realizing my memory card was broken and really knowing what the rest of the trip meant for me. So let's take a gander at her beautiful, beautiful floors. Oh, yes. Now from back to front, you see, we went with a nice bead rolled insert panel. Mm, yes, three panels per panel. Except for the front, where they're each one panel, and they each have one panel. Oh, Rupert, bring me my water. Why this weekend's going, Rupert probably quit too. Yeah, really though, you can see what we did there. I'm gonna walk you through some of it. Back panels, perfectly square. I wish I could tell you it was the easiest one to build. However, it was the hardest one because we were figuring out our process. I and mean, it was very tedious. And guys, these floors turned out very well. They lay down very flat. I'm very proud of them. And I was very proud of the way the video was turning out explaining all this. So that's why it hurts me. I don't mind working through a weekend. I ain't scared. Mama didn't raise no punt. Uh, I just can't redo what's already did. And what I did was done good. So thanks to the way we had built all that, we had a cross member right there to start with. Before any of this went in, we did have some rivets. Y'all can see there's a rivet there. Up here where this cross member is, there's two rivets. Well, if you come over this lip, underneath here, there's a rivet there and a rivet there. And we want our floor to lay flush so those rivets couldn't be there. So I gave them a little grind a rooney see? That's right. Flap attack those down. Now I know you're thinking, well, then you lost the head of your rivet. Yes. So then I drilled down a little bit because there's that rivet's holding so many layers together till she's a little deep. And then I filled that sucker up with weld. You're lucky I didn't JB weld it. No, but really, I welded them up. And then grind that weld down. Oh, hold on. This piece is Clicoed in, which is good. Ha-ha! So right there, maybe y'all can see some of what's left of our weld and where the rivets are. More rivets down there on each side. AKA plenty of strength left. It was time to build our first panel. We got a cross member right here. I decided instead of trying to build this one big piece, knowing I would surely mess it up, to build her in a two-piece. A little two-piece special like my memory card. So I came up here and right here, you can see this starts to pinch in. So that right there is measurement number one, 20 and a quarter. I think the other one was 39 and three eighths. You dang right it was, nailed it. Now for cutting the metal out last week, I actually 
use my shears. Now y'all know I'm usually a slice and dice type of gentleman, but I decided to use these old little metal jaws here and they did quite well. Now luckily, because I've really messed up panels the first go around, I got plenty of reference. God bless America. I got plenty of reference material to show you. So ignore the bead rolls in there. Let's just say I cut out that square, the 20 by 39 and 3 eighths. Well, up next for me was plotting out uh, how I wanted to bead roll, bead roll this. Kind of for a general rule of thumb when I'm doing these step dies, or this baby steps down, I like to always come in from the edge two inches. So on our sweet panel there, I marked this two inch border all the way around. Not true, three inch border on one side. This front one was actually three inches. This one has two and two because I needed a one inch uh, lip of sheet metal. So I, this was our sacrificial piece here. So after I knew my border, the next thing was to decide, you know, how did I want to do the inserts? Now, knowing I wanted three pieces, I'm sure there's a formula equation, some way to do this. I can't ever figure it out. I just knew we were 39 and 3 eighths. Divide that by two, 39, 19 and a half, plus the three, six, half of three, half that, nine, half, 19 and 11 sixteenths. Mark that on one side, then flip it this way and check it. Center. Two inches, two inches. So I know originally I just went like five inches and I marked that. Then I went over our two inch because I wanted a two inch rib down through there. So then my question was between this one and that one there, what do we got? And right there we have about 10 and five eighths. So this one would be 10. This one would be 10 and 5 eighths. This one would be 10 and 5 eighths. So with our uh, 5 eighths difference there, we can try to do a little mathification. I'm going to do a little guessification, which is what I did the first go around. Let's go 5 and 3 sixteenths. Then 2 inches. And then there to there gets us right at 10 and 5 sixteenths, 3 eighths maybe. Of course, if we come this way, 3 sixteenths. Now, of course, by the time we mark that two inches, then we were to measure that, we are also going to get about 10 and 3 eighths. We're going to have three equal panels. Boom, once you got all that math figured out, guys, it's just time to bring in uh, your, your squares and bring in your little one. Or you can get butt nasty and bring in your big one. Of course, you're just marking across, you're doing your borders. Marking this way, y'all know for uh, the corners, I like to use a cutoff wheel as my radius, good four and a half incher. Y'all can see on this panel, where I really messed up, was our bead rolling. Y'all thought they called me Rattle Can Dan. Hell no, they called me Oil Can Dan. And now y'all can see why I obviously had to remake that piece. And we'll get back to the bead rolling and proper process because we're going to do it on one of them panels that we recreate. So after a lot of trial and error with the English wheel and bead roller, I finally created that back panel that I was happy with and we sat it in place. Then I moved forward. So we're doing a repeat process, except this time we're going to end up with a trap, trapezoid, mm, trapezoid. Final answer. Back side's longer than the front side. Well, if you need to cut a trapezoid, that's super simple. We had measure across the back, which is gonna be the same measurement that's across the front of the other one, so 39 and 3 eighths. Then, of course, we'd measure across the front, and I decided 35 inches. Luckily, 35 is a hell of a lot easier to divide by two than 39 and 3 eighths, so it's only 17 and a half. So what we would wanna do is divide this piece in front in half as well. Well, from the center, you'd want to go over 17 and a half. Then the other way, 17 and a half. Of course, that'd give you your 35 inches you need. You'd want to intersect that mark and that corner, and then you'd mark that sucker out. So 
So boom, baby, if we was to match the other side, you could see how we'd have the taper. Now, obviously that would not work for our bead roll. So all you'd want to do is plot this out the same, plot over to here pretty well out the same, except for after cutting that edge, once again, just mark over from that edge two inches. Whoop, two inches. And because it goes in at an angle, when you mark your corner, it is a little different. Obviously, you can see right there, we come around, we follow that, where all that matches, we maintain that two inch. It looks good. To make it to that point on, I think that was like two days worth of work because of all my trial and error with the English wheel and bead roller. Again, we're gonna get to that. We thank you for your sacrifice to our demonstration. That's what I wanted to do when I messed this piece up. I wanted to try to kick it in half. Now with them two pieces in, it was time to get our shifter on. That is a low car shifter. Come to find out it comes in about 1,492 pieces. So when I finally got that on, finally got it back together, we could start looking at how are we gonna uh, create a, a front floor pans. And just like the basics of our other floor pans, I decided how far I wanted to come over then you measure that, that says about 14 and 3 eighths. Up there's about 15 and 3 quarter. Right here, I can tell you what we actually ended up going with. That's just rough numbers, and that may be what you gotta do, guys. Especially on something like this, where you want her to fit tight. Keep cutting your templates, checking it. Looks like we went about 15 and 7 eighths. I know that says 16, but I actually came back about an eighth inch. Then you can see, at one point, I'd cut her too short. See, I didn't like that. That was leaving too much open. So I extended her with the magic blue tape. On this over here, you're just maintaining that angle all the way straight forward, which I did. But then you can see we've got some notches on here. If you come over here, this steps down. So that actually sits flush, even though it don't look like it. But then we got a couple bolts here that we don't want to cover up. But this here does not step down. So the flat floor will hit that. So you can see right there why I notched over to then run forward and then another notch and that gets us up to that breaking point, which is good because that's our tow board area then. And this great fine tuned floor pan right here, which I only ever made one adjustment on, is perfect. I made that floor pan using it and I made that floor pan using it and they both fit absolutely beautiful. So that says that from there forward where we had built, we did a really good job of staying square. And give credit where it's due, oh, Mr. Henry Ford did a pretty good job on this one of making sure the car was square. Because to fit from side to side with no adjustments, no add a little here, take a little there, is super duper impressive if you've ever done this kind of stuff. Usually there's a, just a little fine tweak on something. On this, nothing. Get us a piece to work with here. We're gonna mark her out. And as you can see right there, I put us a mark that said add. One plus one equals two. No, she ain't that simple. Uh, right there's our mark where we know we wanna add a lip. And for our front, we're good to come all the way up to here. Now my thought process is I don't know how we're going to build the tunnel, the center section, the tow boards. All I know is we want as much strength in there as possible. And the way we can accomplish that is by adding a break there, a lip. So I decided about three quarter inches worth would probably be pretty good. Here in the corner, we want to connect that. Just do something about like so. A little dab will do you. What's my name? They call me Repeat Ricky. They call me the same thing, Sammy. They call me Redo Randall. I 
I got to do a cool little flick trick. And as it came back like this, it stopped and those things were still moving. And I just, yeah, don't do what I do. That thing works good for uh, getting your most your perimeter done. Now up here where we got some notches to do, got our relief cuts, uh, another notch. But y'all know you can't just replace the old slice and dice completely, right? Ready. Right there, we've got a pretty clean cut, good looking start to a floor pan. Now for me, now I've got my bead roller set up, we need to flip the panel over. We'll flip her over to mark it out. So on this thing, I just went around three inches from each edge, changed to two inches. All right, back one needed to be two inches, just playing. Got a good job, I work hard for my money. When your memory card breaks, that shit ain't funny. Oh, hold on. I need to add three quarter inches to that. Cause we got our three quarter inch lip there. We need a break. So we want it to be from that broken edge over. Gotta be careful. That's how they get you. radius in the corners and y'all can see what we're working with. Let's go to the old English wheel. Now do not forget, I'm not a sheet metal guy, so I don't really know what I'm doing here, which is why it's hard to show y'all or teach y'all sometimes. Uh, now my wheels here, I did have to sand on them and clean them. They were a little rusty. And our English wheel here, she's just the Grizzly bench top edition. Okay, I think I got this thing on sale back in the day. Back then, it was actually fairly affordable. Post-COVID, y'all know how everything's gone through the roof, so I ain't no telling what it is now. Uh, no more than we do. Uh, this whole thing's done good for us when we need it. So I'm gonna put that panel in there. I'm gonna crank her down. Now, obviously, the more tension you give it, the more you're gonna stretch it. Now, corners here, what I decided to do was uh, two short strokes. So we're just gonna give her the old short stroke there. Back and forth. Gotta try to stay on target here. And we're off again. There we go. I'm trying to do unsuccessfully right now is kind of roll it like that and then like that and two two short strokes right now i'm kind of going like that move on to your next and actually so right on the line is where we're going to bead roll and our steps going to step inwards so from here, it's gonna step over and down. So y'all can see a lot of my wheeling. I'm, I'm kissing that line, but I'm focusing a good amount actually right there on the inside. I know it don't look like a lot, but oh, just you wait till we get done doing this and we try to set this on that flat table again. You're gonna see, uh, you're gonna see how much we're really doing. Now my problem with doing that first panel, the sacrificial piece uh, was I didn't pre-stretch it enough. And I tried, man did I, and I tried, oh my God, do I try? 
I try all the time. Sorry. Uh, I tried very hard to figure out how to determine, oh, that was a bad one, how much uh, pre-stretch we needed. And I fell. Oh my God, did I fail. I'll show you more of that just in a second, guys. Let me finish uh, working out my shoulders here. Yeah, that's right. You're trying to build up your shoulders. Get your damn English wheel. Hey, 40 panel tugs, go. Pudding's planet of fitness. We'll whip that hiney into shape. We can't shape a panel, but we'll shape you up. Ugh. Woo! My hand is on fire. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I feel like I may have overdone it on this one. That song was getting me carried away. We pull that out of there. We come over here to our uh, flat table. Well, what in the wompy donk we got going on there? As you can see, this panel is kind of doing what this panel was doing, where she's all warped. And that's what we want. We're pre-stretching that metal. Because when we run this through them dies and it steps it over, it's going to kind of shrink it down some. So we want to have that area stretched out where it's ready to then be formed by them dies. And hopefully we end up with a pretty flat panel. I marked out our lines because I'm blind. Help, I can't say. I'm going to bring her over here and show you some of our new accessories. In fact, the whole reason we got that doly and did the wheel it run that week was so I could wait for my table to come in and our nylon dies. The steel ones uh, seem to scar up the middle a lot more, so I went with nylon. And this table offers some support, especially doing like our big panel, where it ain't all out there flopping and a topping and a knocking and a jocking everywhere. Now I marked mine on the bottom side. That's because I like to line up that edge uh, to be the one to follow my line. So as you can see, that will actually step the metal up and over. So then when we turn that down, it'll actually be stepped down, not up. Don't get confused, we'll just a little bass backwards. Of course, in the original video, I showed y'all setting up all this crap and everything uh, because that was the first time I've ever used nylon dies. That's where I want to be. A little light to help me see. Turn that hat backwards so they know you mean business. Look at her, the eagle eye. Mm-hmm. I almost forgot the most important part. You put your glasses that help you see on the tip of your nose. That way when I get down here, I can look over them and they're useless. We're rolling, baby. We are rolling. Slow and steady wins the race in this case. Y'all can tell already how uh, that table helps support. Now instead of worrying about picking up the panel, I can just kind of focus on turning the panel. I can be this panel's guiding light. Roll out of there, we're in a straightaway. Coming through the straightaway and we're in our next corner here, folks. He comes in hot. We're doing a steady roll and go right there. Nice little, oh baby. Oh, we got caught up a little bit because someone didn't clean the edges of our uh, panel there. Now be careful, that light can help you. She'll mess you up too. Big long straight away. Also, obviously stepping this up this way uh, allows our table to help us. Because if we were stepping down, then we'd, we'd be fighting the way our uh, panel was going. Went into that corner like I knew what I was doing or something. Dang! I'm doing better on this one than I was last week. Don't tempt me, we'll take all them damn floors out. We'll do her again. Screw it, we're going live. All right, we, we made it back to our starting point. So just to help feather that, I like to tighten off or loosen off a little bit. Am I tripping? I think I'm tripping out. I swear every time I let off that, that wheel starts spinning the other way. And after releasing or some, I like to just roll it. That way it kind of tapers off. If we weren't exactly perfect, hopefully it helps it blend. 
baby i was getting her done there uh now y'all can see we'll clean this panel up now you may see some markings or like some rubs but this don't actually scar the metal but you see that line right there where my finger's at that's because we did that piece with the steel dies and my steel dies have always done that and yeah i just this thing's too nice to be just tearing up the floors even though I'm gonna put sound in there on there and carpet and seats and you'll never see them. We cannot have a scratch on our damn floor. In fact, that back panel I'm not exactly pleased with, uh, which is why I said moving forward, I wanna do a lot better where I could hold myself to do a little bit higher standard. Uh, now is all that back there fine? Yeah, it is. But if we can really get this thing set up, why not? This car is absolutely worth it, guys. Beautiful car, we wanna do her justice. Now, as far as doing nice corners and staying on task, uh, this one we just did very well. And speaking of very well, you can see how very well this thing is laying flat on our table here. I don't think for this piece we'd need any additional shrink, shrinking or stretching. Shrinking, stretching. Which means we got uh, the right amount of pre-stretch in this. Now, let me tell you a little something about pre-stretch. Pre-stretch is something that I think thought I could figure out how to measure. So I spent one day, guys, it took me one day to make that rear piece. That was cutting out a square of metal and then plotting it out. And then what I decided to do was see how much does bead roll in just with that, no pre-stretch. How much does it warp a panel? Why don't you ask this little sucker right here? So I had this scrap piece of metal. So I just roughly uh, did us a circle on there. Well, you see what you get there, right? That thing is warped to dilly wop. You can see I got some measurements there. I decided I could try to measure something. Obviously that one failed. So then I cut out this piece. And this is a third of that big one. I mapped out where we wanted to bead roll it. I then marked and referenced right at the inside, right on the line. And then I came out here to even the outside. So across this way, at the top and bottom, I had three measurements each. And then I turned this way and I did the same thing. Measurement there, there, and there, 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 and there, across to everywhere. With those measurements, I then come over here and I, uh, 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 I wheeled it. I English wheeled it, just like y'all seen me do that one, to see as that panel starts to stretch and it starts to grow in the center, what I was hoping is I could figure out how much do we need to pre-stretch that by how much do we need to grow that area. It was an idea that, long story short, it did not work. I'm sure there's a way it can be done. The way that ended up working best for figuring it out was just being willing to do it over and over again until I got a feel for it. Because this panel, I thought I pre-stretched it enough. I don't know if y'all can see that, but I did not. It is still oil cannon. It does not fit f sit flat. This way, we're actually pretty good. Same with that away. So a little shrinking here, and we may be able to save this. The easiest way to get a panel to lay flat, I don't care what anyone says. I know people's going to say, do multiple passes, just slower at a time. You won't get as much distortion, all that kind of stuff. Guys, it don't work for me. Okay, I've tried the crap. The best way to get a panel to lay flat after you bead roll it is to pre-stretch it the correct amount or pretty close to so you have a minimal amount of distortion. Am I saying this one's absolutely perfect? No, but is it pretty damn close? Yeah. We're about to help lay these suckers flatter because we've got to, uh, 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 we've got to break some edges. Th this is gonna make the panel strong, don't get me wrong. But we're about to really put some strength in her. We may have this thing out at the junkyard or something to have to haul some scrap metal home. So we want some strong floors in it just in case this thing becomes a parts hauler. Maybe we find a good deal on an old greasy nine inch center chunk. Just set her on the floors. To break this up, I like to draw my lines. You don't have to, cause you know you're gonna go from there to there, there to there. Oh, right there you gotta draw your line or you're gonna be shooting in the dark. That's why I wanted y'all see last week's video cause a lot of it was firing from the hip. Uh, now you can tell I kinda know what I'm doing. 
because it's almost like I did it a week ago. Get your old platypus pullers. I seen these at the Lowe's a while back. Yeah, yeah. Bend her about 90, but she's about to get tore up. That's because we don't have proper equipment, but we do have a wheel. We have the wheel to persevere. We have the wheel to put some manipulation in this sheet metal situation. And just as sure as the tornado will surely rip across the Oklahoma plains before too long, this piece of metal is about to get tore up. She's gonna get tore up when we do that. Then we want the other side to match, so she's gonna get tore up doing that. But that's what we gotta do. And don't worry guys, it's just metal. I bet we can fix it with old platypus pullers. Kinda, sorta, maybe. Yep, yep, yep. We're rubbing right there, we need to cut that opening. Still tappy, tappy, tappy. This one we brought her here past 90, it looks like. It's gotta relieve that down through there. Careful, dab will do ya. Now you could spend a little more time and get you a dolly and flatten that up some more. But overall, guys, that right there is a pretty clean look. And as you can imagine already, there is just a ton of strength in this thing. That piece, strength. This lip alone, a ton of strength this way. Oh, but what about this way? Is she floppy? No, says I, because of this right here. Now we're gonna weld that together, which will obviously lock all that together, making it even stronger. This panel's got more strength than any other known floor pan ever made by man. That's what I heard anyhow. It is ready to be cleaned, cleaned up and then trimmed down. So that corner there, well, she sticks out there where cardboard junction is. And as you may see, cause I wanted that as close as could be to this. Obviously if we had a big old three quarter inch slip on that, well it hit. And don't worry. That's supposed to be up there like so. So our passenger side was the very first one I did. And all I did was I brought this baby over here, drop her down into place. As y'all can see, uh, that is indeed a beautiful fit. And all I did was kind of look and be like, oh, okay, maybe right in here, we'll notch up and kind of go that away or whatever. Just making sure we got good clearance in there. Up in that corner area, I ended up taking off quite a bit and then carried around this way and took off a little less. There she is all notched out. That bad girl right there, I'm a fan of. This is a paint stripping disc, and it claims it's 40 grit. However, even though it uh, does a really good job of cleaning up that metal, don't scratch it super duper deep like a 40 grit. And I realize that if you do that and then go to 80 on the DA, she seems to clean up pretty good.
Yes, ma'am. That old panel right there make you wanna say hot damn, cause that is a nice looking panel. That still looks terrible. We ain't gonna touch it. If we were putting in this car, we would. In fact, all of our pieces that are welded in, well, I brought them over here to our very professional paint booth. Let's again, drop that sucker in. And that panel now is basically caught up to where this one is. Two things different over here. One, our pedal. And I just slowly notch that out. No big deal. Two, the master cylinder. Well, there's our door. I just measured over from the edge with this panel out and I knew I needed to come over roughly X amount of inches and I knew I roughly wanted it X amount of inches wide. And I just laid out where our opening needed to be. Well, there's just a one inch little metal lip welded around here. I just cut that out four pieces, nothing too fancy. I told y'all I needed a one inch lip off that panel earlier. If you're paying attention, well, this is where it went. That one inch lip, and so these have something to push up against. In fact, they came off of that piece right there. And this piece would shove down in there using the same technique. So obviously that keeps it from going side to side. To keep it going front to back, you can see how narrow they had theirs. Uh, I opened and spread mine apart, allowing only about an eighth inch from the end. She worked out pretty good. She just shoves down in there. And of course, I just explained that in like two minutes. In reality, doing that whole piece took probably three, four hours to figure out and to accomplish. Now we are brought up to speed. And once again, I apologize because losing that video really hurt my feelings. But I do hope that helps you understand how we got from there up to where we're at. This one back in place. Uh, last thing I want to show you is, of course, I got my cardboard chimps because those will fall down. Uh, but once you get those cardboard chimps in proper place, that sucker is nice and flat. I thought about it. I went, we could hang this thing on the wall. I mean, obviously, I wanted to show y'all. Or what I could do is pick one random mortar from a release today, uh, our wagon, two t-shirts that released, and some of the hats. And one lucky random winner. There's no way to up your chances. It's just going to be a roll of the dice. I'm just going to pack this up with somebody's order and send it out to them. And then you can hang it on your wall or you can throw it in your scrap metal bin or in your garbage can. We're going to write, thanks for the support, an autograph for pudding. Then we're going to get our old spray on sweet patina here. This is a little light oil coat to keep this baby from rusting. All right, we'll let that kind of do a little soak in about 15, 20 minutes. I'll wipe her, wipe her down with a microfiber. There should be plenty of time for her to sink into the pores and all that good stuff. I think she'll be good. I'm definitely going to have to get some lunch, though. I'm a hungry boy. Does a broken memory card have you down in the dumps? Well, boy. Do I have just what you need? I'm listening. You need a burrito from the Taco Boy. Taco Boy burritos are made from heaven dust and hand-selected ingredients. Mmm, mmm. Before I had a burrito, I was really sad and upset because my memory card was broken in half. But now, I have seemed to have forgotten about that. Thanks, Taco Boy. Warning, side effects of eating a Taco Boy burrito may include the inability to stop eating, taking bites, or chewing. Hey there, mister. Are you feeling spicy? I sure am. Then spice it up a bit with that delicious homemade salsa. Mm, mm, mm. Yummy. Warning, consuming Taco Boy may cause you to want to dance. You may also repeatedly say, mm, 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 because it tastes so good. Taco Boy is not responsible for becoming addicted to their burritos. I left off one leveling that. Two, I had purchased the round trim ring and shifter boot kit thingy. It did not take long to see this was not going to work for me. Got a black mark right there. That's about where that would have to sit. So this swinging arm could have some motion in the ocean, baby. So we could build a flat floor and build a perfect circle that picked up. And then we could screw that to it. What I want to achieve is as much flat floor as possible. We could try to hump this some um, to bring it up, which I don't think would be very smart because the average person's gonna have about 13 inches across there. And as you can see, 13 inches don't cover very much, does it? Bit of our chairs there and we can get up in here and that's pretty flat. We can get closer to having 15 inches. Which 
means I may be able to wear my cowboy boots and ride in this rig. Who knows, maybe I convinced George Strait to ride with me or something. I just knew we'd be ahead to get one of the rectangle trim rings. And as you can see, that almost allows us to go flat. We are hitting our swing arm just a tad. So we got three options. Option one, elevate that some. Option two, offset it to a side and it would actually fit. I forgot what option three was. Oh, grind on this thing to get it to clear where we could go centered and clear that. And as expensive as a low car shifter is, I don't really want to go cutting on it. But here's the dealio. We're already going to cut on it. I realized we could go all flat across there until we hit this. That is obviously part of our, you know, 19,000 pieces and it being adapted to all this different crap. We go right back there, we're clearing. We go right up there, we are not. We can remove that screw right there. We can cut this bracket about right there, straight across, put us a little weld right there. This opening up here, since we're going to cut across, we'll probably want to put us a piece of scrap in there and weld it up. Oh, I definitely got them tight. Ah. We may have to cut that bracket there. Voila! And we'll probably come over at an angle. About like so. Yeah. Now we got some clearance. As far as putting a piece on here to stiffen this up. We're gonna follow our brake lines there and there. Cut her across about in there. Looking good. Hold your breath in there. Just quick little zap. Come on, baby. I think that's gonna be pretty close right there. That yeah, looks like a beaver bit it. Go six and three sixteenths, but up there we only got six inches and six inches up there. So we'll go an even 14 inches. Six inches, six inches, six inches. That should be pretty close to what we need, except I didn't add like a sixteenth of material to each side, like I said. Meh. To figure out our hole, kind of eagle-eyed that, line that up, the hole of that, uh, kind of in the center with that. Four and three-eighths. Four and three-eighths. That's where that inside lip needs to stop. Just need to grind a little bit off that piece we added there. <laughs> I 
Made sure we were nice and level across there. We're level back here and back here. We're fitting in between up there pretty good. That is also sitting back flush. Now that's obviously gonna keep us from being able to twist, jerk, move, bend, so far or so forward and so forth, or however you say that. I do believe we are gonna make this front pan removable because if we ever even have to pull the motor and transmission, the way this mounts to this, this piece would need to come out just where the transmission could go forward because this couldn't slide through that, obviously. So since we're gonna make it removable, I figure we'll make this all one big piece and then whatever's gonna attach up to there can be its own thing. And we're definitely gonna try to go nice and slow here, trying not to warp our sheet metal. Looking good, looking good. You're thinking those look terrible. It's because they do. In fact, they look a little bubble gummed. That's because this edge being broke was kind of curved. So I was purposely trying to kind of cap the top of that. It'll work or it won't. Quick little DA action. I took the cardboard out. That still needs to actually pick up just a hair. Uh, now this piece up here, we're probably gonna trim it out some. Uh, right here, I tapped that with the hammer twice, not paying attention, I hit her at an angle, and I knocked a little crease in there. Once again, none of this is perfect, but she's pretty dang close. Right there you can see where uh, my weld missed. Well, the weld hit, I just didn't cap enough there to fill up from that curve of the edge or whatever. Now our front floor pan went from two to three to one. And overall, those floors look pretty damn good. <laughs> so I think we're gonna call it right there guys. It's already past four o'clock So you can see even having a plan already having a template for the uh, the piece that I made and showed y'all uh, The sheet metal work can just add up and take it takes some time it takes will hard work and dedication We still got some to figure out on it how we want to make it removable how to tie the uh, tow boards and stuff to it Which I don't want to lock any of this in or mount it for good until we figure all that. Right now she's quick release, which we like. So I'm happy with that progress. Hey, uh, I'm, a, I'm a glass half full kind of guy. If we wouldn't have broke that memory card in half, we wouldn't have that progress done right now, would we? That's right. I think things went pretty good because I got my Christmas shirt on in March. That's the secret, everyone. You want the ultimate fabrication powers, take your Christmas shirt, rip them sleeves off. That's up next. Hey, speaking of, uh, Puddin's Fab Shop t-shirts. Do not forget the wagon, uh, limited edition, and other edition, regular edition, whatever you call that edition, have released today, as well as some hats. One lucky person who orders after 
uh, today is going to get our panel from this video with their order. Maybe they can bake cookies on it. Who knows? Guys, we appreciate all the support there, uh, especially when you know your video ain't going to do as good because you broke the memory card in half and now you're having to pull one out your tail. The support from you guys keeps us growing, keeps us going. I cannot thank you guys enough for being here. Thank y'all for uh, watching this video, especially if you made it here to the end. It truly means the world to me. Uh, y'all keep my heart so happy and full. Uh, I cannot thank y'all enough for the, the support. So with that being said, I better get after it, guys, because like I said, now I've got a lot of editing. we got birthday party, church, event and surgery monday we'll take any prayers there thank you guys for those uh and other than that i will s oh no i'm on the instagrammer i'm on the patreon i'm on the facebooker and other than that i will see you guys next time however do not forget sitting on your ass won't finish your project karate chopping your damn memory card in half won't get your video out Yes, ma'am. That old panel right there make you want to say hot damn.